Hey guys, uh, so uh, this is one of my um, convector units from one of my radiators. Um, it failed. You can see here it's about uh, I don't know 60 years old, and it looks like the uh, manifold here rusted out right where the uh, the uh, air release valve ties in so I'm assuming there's probably some oxidation or corrosion or some some sort of uh, metal reaction that was occurring over many years you can see it's rusted too so I'm sure as some of the water leaked out of the out of the bleeder valve it, I'm sure it, it, it rusted out. anyway so what I had to do was um, was isolate this unit um, put some some stops in on the supplies and um, and removed it um, but now what I need to do is uh, replace this unit with a new unit um, so I went to the uh, local plumbing supply store and bought a new convector um, slightly smaller than this one this seems to have been a non-standard size so I got one slightly smaller um, as a result, I needed to create a little um, a little wooden chassis for it to sit on since it doesn't meet up with the with the metal clips in the uh, convector box itself. So that was real simple, just to just screwed some wood together to make a, a little stand for it. Um, I'm using uh, PEX with an O2 barrier for the new supplies and um, clamp rings. So uh, I went to the, to the supply shop and picked up all those supplies. I think with the unit itself and the tools and the, and the packs, it probably cost me about 450 bucks. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and replace this unit, put in the new one. Um, yeah, so we'll see how that goes. So as I said before, you can see that the convector unit itself is a little smaller than the than the box. So I had to create a, a wooden um, little chassis for it to sit on. Now it's important to make sure that the side with the bleeder valve is higher than the other side. This way the air can make its way to the bleeder valve itself. So you can see that it's a little off level here on purpose. Uh, so I just went ahead and placed it, roughed in the... The PEX itself made sure that all my fittings were screwed in and properly taped into the into the unit. And then um, when it comes time to connect the PEX itself, it's pretty simple. You just slide the clamp ring on to the PEX itself and then push to connect over the, um, the fitting here. Now you can see the grooves on the fitting itself. When it's time to crimp the ring, you want to make sure that you're that your your ring is is centered on the um, on one of the the grooves themselves. So you can see here, I I made a little spacer um, so that the the ring itself fits over the last groove in the in the fitting. You want to make sure you get yourself a a good clamping tool. The one that I have has a it, there's no guesswork. It uh, automatically releases once it's crimped in place. Uh, so you can see you just squeeze it tight and then it, it releases. It takes all the guesswork out of it. So once I have all the fittings in place, it's just, just as easy to just slide the unit back on, sitting on top of the, um, the wooden chassis that I, that I created. And then it's once that's in place, it's time to go down into the basement and, and connect all the, the fittings to the supply. Okay, so now we're down here in the basement. You can see the run. This is where the supplies um, have to attach to the main loop. Um, so I have the pecs snaked in through the ceiling. I have a drop ceiling in my basement, so I have easy access. Now these are the T's off of the, the main system. It's a monoflow T system. So the loop supplies uh, two T's off 
into the convector unit itself. Um, you can see the old galvanized supplies um, that I had cut off earlier. So we're just gonna snake the, the PEX through up um, and then you can see it's roughed in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and cut this back into place. Um, probably gonna need to trim it a little more, but um, for now I'm just gonna cut it here and um, get ready to, to disassemble the supply, the old supplies themselves, which, which might prove to be a, a little tough considering they've been there for over 60 years. I'm gonna hit this with some penetrant. And then I'm gonna hit the other one as well. Let that work for a few minutes and then see if I can bust these nuts out. So I was able to get it to budge a little bit. You can see it's off center by using this 18 inch monkey wrench and tapping um, with this mallet. Um, so now that I know I can get it to move, I'm just going to go ahead and use my pipe cutter to cut off this supply so it's shorter so I can actually because it's fixed to this to the nut there so it needs to be able to rotate freely so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it off as close as I can and then uh, I'll be back to finish unscrewing it. Okay so I liberated the rest of the pipe uh, using just a regular pipe cutter um, the monkey wrench and the mallet did the trick. So I'm gonna come back here just with my adjustable and you can see it's backing out nicely. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep spinning this guy off and then I'm gonna do the same for the other side and then plumb in the, the pecs and we should be set. Looks like I have a little bit of residual water in the system. So, just clean this bucket over the. It's not too much, just so you don't make a huge mess. I'll let that out and I'll clean this up. So. Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and tape these guys with some Teflon. Probably unnecessary, but I might put a little bit of dope on top of the Teflon. It's gonna be in for the next 30 years. Okay, so I got this guy taped. Put a little bit of pipe dope on there. I'm gonna tighten him into place. Uh, gonna get it pretty snug. Not gonna go too crazy, don't wanna stretch the threads too much, but I'm gonna get it, you know, pretty snug until uh so I can't really turn too much or if there's significant resistance. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and get these and get this first one in and I'm gonna do the second one. Uh and then this should be good. with the wrench. Okay. Okay, so I got this guy in. I'm gonna repeat for the next one. We'll put the clamp on the pecs. I'll fix the pecs and then crimp it and then we'll uh, repressurize the system and see where we're at. Okay, now that we've got both of 
put them on. I'm gonna make sure that we slip the clamp on the pecs and then uh, see if we can get the pecs to fit in. I may, I may need to actually trim this back a little bit. I'm gonna give myself maybe a little too much slack, but we'll see. the ring between the two ridges and you want to make sure it's square and I'm just gonna go ahead and clamp that okay so we're all crimped in we got the line running up to the convector unit this guy's crimped in now you could have taken a Opportunity if we really wanted to be fancy to put a ball stop valve here and here so we can isolate the unit if we really wanted to. But um, the good thing about PEX is if I wanted to add one, it's easy enough to cut in and, and add one. Um, so we're all set here. Um, I'm just gonna repressurize the system, turn the heat up. When the um, the one thing that we need to make sure is that the um, pressure relief valve on the unit we installed is fully closed, or else it'll start. It could potentially leak. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, pressurize the whole system, and then we gotta bleed all the all the units in the house um, and then we'll make sure we don't have any leaks but so that should be it should be good no sign of water no sign of water let's just double check nope we're good here alright I'm gonna quickly go upstairs to the first floor and check. No leaks. No leaks. No leaks on the bleeder valve. Just gonna go ahead and actually open these guys up. coming out of the system. This is really the true test because there was really no water in the system until now because it was air blocked. So you see that little spurt? Now I'm gonna go ahead and close this guy. That means the system clean up that water that needs to get this loop is now filled. I'm gonna dry this up, make sure I get this water off of here. That's why it's important to have this end of the radiator unit higher than, than this end so any blocked air gets pushed to the bleeder valve. Alright, so now that everything is is pexed in um, the biggest issue is going to be air bubbles. Uh, the way this system works is, is there's really no supply and return. This is, this, even though this is the return and this is the supply, the, there's nothing isolating them. So if there's any air bubbles trapped in the supply, the return acts as a supply so essentially you can open up your your bleeder valve 
and get all the air out and the system still might not work because there might be an air bubble trapped in the other line and it's not going to be able to flush it out because it's being pressurized from from both sides and the way that your radiator is getting the hot waters is once the system is fully pressurized is is through convection um, so your radiator could remain cold which is what happened to me when I just when I just tested so what I did was um, was manipulated the lines um, to try to force any air bubbles towards the radiator and since the radiator has slack in it now that it's got PEX flex it up and down to get all the all the air to where the where the bleeder valve is um, that seemed to fix the problem most likely after this retrofit you will have uh, some air bubbles so you just gotta try to do what you can to get the air out um, you know I probably have a little bit more slack in these lines than, than ideal so I'll, I'll tack them up um, but unless you're redraining the system, once you get the air bubbles out, you, you should be good. But if your radiator is still cold after doing this, it's almost a certainty that you have an air bubble somewhere. So you're going to have to try to manipulate all this to try to flush the air towards the radiator. Um, you know, manipulate it a bunch of times, bleed it a bunch of times, you'll hear air start hissing. Um, every time you hear new air hissing, it means you, you've gotten an air bubble towards the radiator, which is good. Um, so now that I've done that, the radiator's heating up, so we're all good.